Hi, hope you're doing super well and keeping safe. If we've not met before, my name is James and I'm from Sydney, Australia. Today I stumbled across this random exhibition, well plant exhibition, here at the Calyx, which is at the Royal Botanic Garden, Sydney, and I thought I'd go and check it out. Um, I wasn't intending to shoot some video today, I've got no hair gel on, but <laughs> it's all good. I thought I'd shoot some random video and just see how we go. I mean, hopefully we're pleasantly surprised, so stay tuned if you want to see some random plants here at the Royal Botanic Garden, Sydney. See you there. So we're here at the Calyx entrance and I've always been awestruck at the architecture on how this entrance looks like. Continuing on, this is the pathway to the entrance of the exhibition. You'll be greeted by a massive inside the tide sign and I'm just going to continue walking to the right here to show you more of the building itself. The view is pretty impressive in my opinion. Just take that all in. When you make your way into the building and pay a donation, you'll be greeted by the entrance door and off you go. I'm going to give you a full walkthrough of the exhibition which has over 20,000 plants on display. Look at this bright green neon fern, it really pops out hey? As we go along here, can you spot the lobster? They've got a few pillars which they've affixed some ivies to, which I really love. The ones in purple here are coral bells. It was the first time I actually learned of these when I went to this exhibition. So zooming out to give you more of a view. We've got a bed full of curly spider plants here and some more cool looking ferns. I mean, I personally don't own any ferns, but after seeing so many different types, I may be converted. I actually didn't realise that there were so many. So they've planted a few snake and aloe plants here too, but check out the patterns of those ones. No, I did not fart, that was just my shoe creaking on the floor. Some of you guys hated my background music, so today's video, I kept the original audio so you could cop a feel of the actual experience itself. Now we're walking past some more cool ferns and snake plants, and it looks like we've just arrived at Succulent Central. You'll probably recognize a lot of these types in terrariums. So more succulents as you go along. And our first cactus. So did you know that this wall is one of the largest living rain walls in the Southern Hemisphere, according to Google? I am very impressed. Out of all the cacti, this is probably one of my favourites aesthetically because it reminds me of Mickey Mouse. And we've got some other succulents and agave nested around it. So this exhibition is supposed to mimic an underwater experience, so you'll be hearing a lot of water trickling and some theatric sounds as you go along. And here we've got the common jade plant, which I also have at home. My parents are growing heaps of these in their front and backyards. This cactus obviously stood out. It's a massive ball. It looks super cool. So here's a few benches you can rest your tush on, but as you continue along, there's more jade plants. So you can spot the foxtail agave. So the next agave that you see on the right here is a pineapple express. And now we're greeted with a sea of more jade plants. See what I did there. As we walk around this plant bed, there's some more types of cacti to admire. Some stone crop, more coral, another foxtail agave, and some spider plants. So I do apologise if this footage is a little shaky. I didn't intend to shoot any video today. So I didn't have my gimbal with me, but I did try to stay as stable as I could and here I'm even actually walking backwards. 
Moving on to the second last bed of this exhibit, there's some more spider plants. Aloes. Should just come here if I ever have a burn or a cut. And a massive octopus. Some starfish there and a shark. So we're ending here on the bromeliads and the dracaenas. But as you can see, all the plants are looking so luscious and healthy, which has reminded me that I need to do some upkeeping of my own plants as well. Okay, so luckily for me, I'm the only one at this exhibition at the moment, so I don't have to fight through crowds of people. Uh, but it is a pretty cool exhibition. It is rather short. Uh, entry was donation based only, so you could do a minimum donation of up to $5, which is pretty cheap and it's pretty cool. They've got some like plaques around that tell you about the plants themselves and if you want to learn a little bit more, but yeah, do check it out if you're in the Royal Botanic Gardens, it's at the Calyx, and hopefully you'll enjoy the exhibition here. Anyway, stay safe and I will see you in my next video. See ya! Welcome to Plant Rants and Vans where I showcase some cool, funny, or interesting plant content that I find online. You may be shocked to hear this, but I actually don't own a fiddle leaf fig. I never jumped on the bandwagon of this one, as there were so many other plants out there that have caught my attention. A dear friend approached me for some advice, however I extended that call out online on my Instagram, where a bunch of amazing people helped repost some tips. So for example here, Sven wrote, watering every two to three weeks, only when dry, they like to have a consistent watering schedule, clean leaves weekly, and place in a well-lit spot with medium to bright light. Blissful Green Sanctuary here highlights the importance of cleaning slash wiping its leaves, which really help in preventing pests like spider mites. If you've had pesky spider mite infestations like I have, you'll probably advocate that prevention is better than cure, as I've fought them for weeks on end. If you want five quick tips on the fiddle leaf fig, According to the experience of some other fiddle leaf fig owners, the exact summary is bright indirect light, allowing the soil to dry between watering, routine leaf wipe, adding NPK monthly, and finally patience. Ficuses take time to acclimate, so pick a good spot and try not to move it. I just want to say thanks to those who took their time out to write up some detailed replies particularly Miguel here, who wrote a clear and concise guideline, which pretty much covers everything you need to know in a couple of messages based off personal experience. Feel free to pause the video if you wanted to read further.